All right, everybody. I want to show you some uh, stone tools. I'm making a uh, short bow for uh, early season when there's a lot of brush here. You you know you can get a shot from five yards away. So I'm making a short bow. This is a green stave I just cut and split. Now I don't have antler splitting wedges. I should make some. So I didn't video that. Uh, you know, splitting it with the antler. But I started working it with my uh, my antler, you know, my abo arrow slash bow tool. And uh, this is how it works. This side is like a rasp. This side is like a rasp. And watch, you can see the shavings on my knee. But if you want to make a bow, I haven't done that wait two years after you cut wood for 20 some years. As long as you do it evenly and you don't, I think big trees have more problems with that maybe, I don't know, but I rough my bow out to uh, the thickness, which is generally a half an inch thick, guys. Work it down to half an inch thick, and you're going to be in a 45 or 50 pound range. If you're wider, it'll be higher, and if you're narrower, lower. But when I get this down, this this bow stave down to half an inch thick, it will come out to be like, actually probably 60 because it's short. But I like this wood because... The grains go around the knots. So I don't have to do anything here. I peeled the bark. It's a really dense uh, wood. I don't really know what it is. This is the first time I ever cut this. I cut it in the woods behind my house. Um, I think it's some kind of privet, but I have no idea. I expected it to be brown in the middle and really soft, but it's really dense. Um, my only concern is it might be uh, weak in tension which once it dries, I'll test it. I, I kept a piece. I kept this piece from the splitting to test. So I know if I've got a sinew back it, I'm going to sinew back the flat side so I can spread the tension as much as possible. If I don't have to sinew back it, I'm just going to go because I love these, this little knobby look. Um, I'm just going to go with that. But when that board, when that piece, that piece of split dries, I'll test it. Now you can see here's a spot where I haven't scraped. Um, and this thing just goes to town. And I'm telling you, waiting two years to make your bow, I don't think anybody in prehistory did that. Maybe the English, because, you know, they were making a thousand bows. They just cut a bunch of trees and, you know, put them in the castle or whatever. But, you know, if you're out living in the woods during the Stone Age, you're not stocking up, you know, uh, trees for, for years from now. And carrying them around or whatever. Now, I have read somewhere where they would you know like cut the tree the bow stave out on the tree and uh, you know leave it there and then come back and get it so that might be a possibility um, to have backup staves but if you got to be somewhere and you know you lose your bow you, you know uh, a bear or an enemy enemy takes your bow <laughs> You know, your bow just breaks. It just wears out. You're, you're, you need to be able to make a bow. Um, and that, that's, you know, in, in real reality, you could uh, do this. Now, you notice I haven't thin down the tips. I haven't, you know, flared the handles or anything. Um, I'm just making it an even thickness so that it dries evenly. 
and uh, it's got a little snake to it which I like I like a little snake get my tools my foot napping tools out of the way <clears throat> I like a little snakiness now you see if uh, if this is the back put your handle there and for a right hander it it makes the bow over a little so you you can have a different a lower spine arrow like if this was 60 pounds you could maybe shoot or if this was a 40 pound bow you could shoot like a 60 pound spine because it, it doesn't have to bend to get around the handle so that's the thing to remember I always work my string so that it ends up just barely inside the limb I don't want it outside because then the bow will want to twist like that I just want it inside just barely inside this limb if you're right-handed or that limb if you're left-handed or side not limb but so I'm making my bow because I want to do some shooting I started arrows uh, <clears throat> I took these uh, I shaped these sh shafts yesterday with my smooth shaper see this one is smooth um, it won't make all these shilling let me see how it works on this see it's more for dry wood the smooth is more for dry wood and that rough one is more like a wood rasp see these little teeth are more like a wood rasp and this is a good raw flint it'll last a long time and uh, if you're doing primitive woodworking with stuff like this work the wood green <laughs> that's all I can tell you um, you know not completely but just to you uh, get where you're going just to get close and then finish with the uh, with the regular uh, tools.